I just want to mention the top three sins that I have heard in the confessional over my 14 plus years as a priest and then explain why all of these three top sins are not actually sins. The first most frequently confessed sin is, Father, I get distracted in prayer. I get distracted in prayer lots of times, and I used to think that because I was distracted in prayer, I might be the Antichrist. The devil was telling me every other person in the world does not get distracted when they pray, but you do, so you are some sort of Antichrist or something like that. But here's the great news. The Catechism in 20, paragraph 27, 60, 27, 29 basically says all of us get distracted in prayer. All that's necessary when we realize that we've been distracted is to make a quick prayer. Lord Jesus, I was distracted. I know that's not a sin. Help me to refocus on you. And so that is a great relief. And so I'm blessed to be able to tell people that now in the confessional that getting distracted in prayer is not a sin. It's only a sin, and all sins require us to actively be doing it and willing it with our heart. And so most of the time, 99.9% .9 of the time, when we are distracted, we are not willing it. We're not working at it. We don't desire that. And so if we're not desiring that, again, then the catechism says that all that's necessary when we realize we've been distracted in prayer is to make a quick prayer saying, Jesus, I, I love you with all my heart. I was distracted. I know it's not a sin. The second most confessed sin is lustful thoughts. And again, I'm happy to let people know now that lustful thoughts are not sins. I used to think they were, and again, the devil was telling me that because I was having lustful thoughts, that I was the Antichrist, that no one else had these lustful thoughts, right? But what I recognize now and what the church says and teaches about that, and St. John Paul II helped me understand this in a special way, is that the devil suggests things to us just as he gets starts to tell us when we get distracted in prayer that we're great sinners and possibly the Antichrist. He suggests things to us, sometimes horribly lustful images and visions, but it doesn't, it's not a sin unless we are actually willing these lustful thoughts, right? Unless we are engaging with them and kind of downloading them from the internet, from the cloud, if you will, and making them our own. That's the only time it's a sin. And again, I think, you know, St. Padre Pio provides this great example for this. He talked in his letters about how, particularly at the Mass, the devil would assault him with the most blasphemous, lustful images imaginable. But because St. Padre Pio knew that they were coming from the devil, he was able to just brush them off and press on with Mass. I think a lot of us, we think that we're the only ones that have lustful thoughts, whether it's during Mass, whether it's at home, whether it's during prayer, whatever it might be, that we're the only ones, we listen to the devil's lies and we think that we're the only ones that have these blasphemous thoughts, these lustful thoughts that come to us. But again, the devil is, Satan is actually, one of, one of the translation of Satan is the accuser, right? So what he does is he suggests these things to us, but then he gets us to t think that they're coming from us, and so then he turns around and he accuses us. Look what you did. You're a, you're a horrible sinner. You might be the Antichrist. No one else has these thoughts. Again, I'm happy to tell people in the confessional that having lustful thoughts is not a sin unless we're actively desiring and engaging with those thoughts. And finally, the third most confessed sin is very, pretty similar to the first one, distraction is a prayer. The third most confessed sin in the confessional is, Father, I get distracted at Mass. And again, I'm happy to tell people now, I used to think I was the Antichrist, but I'm happy to tell people I get distracted at Mass multiple times during the Mass, and I'm the ones, I am the person at Mass who's reading and speaking most of the time. 
And so what I do, probably several different times after this homily, while I'm praying the Eucharistic prayer, my mind will be distracted. And once I recognize that, I just make a quick prayer in my mind. Lord, I was distracted. I know it's not a sin. Help me to refocus on you. There are lots of people in Dearborn County and around the world that struggle with all of these three things that I just mentioned. There are 51,900 people living in Dearborn County, Indiana, according to the last census. We will be offering classes starting September 14th at 6.30 p.m. at the St. Martin's Hall in Yorkville. Hopefully the second class, we have to rent out the Bengals Stadium for the 51,900 people who show up for this first class. Again, I learn lots of things. I've taught RCIA in the, the class that prepares people to become Catholic. I've taught that for the last 12 years, and I'll be teaching it again this year. And I still learn stuff every time. People ask questions. I, sometimes I know the answer, but if I don't, I say, that's a good question. I'll look it up and get back with you to find the answer out. And I look it up and I email the class or whoever is in, I get that answer back out to the class. So again, I think a lot of people need to hear this homily, but then also lots of other beautiful things that the church teaches. Right? The church has the answer to every question that is plaguing the human heart. And so woe to us if we sit on what we have found here and don't invite anyone else to this church Thinking about that first reading, the prophet Isaiah says in the Old Testament, my house will become a house of prayer, speaking on behalf of God, right? So Isaiah is telling on behalf of God, my house will become a house of prayer for all peoples. And again, that would have been blasphemy to the Jews who Isaiah was speaking to. Because the temple at the time was only a place of worship for the Jewish people. But again, God says through the prophet Isaiah, my house one day will become a house of prayer for all peoples. And that is what this Catholic church building is. It is a house of prayer for all peoples. So woe to us if we don't extend an invitation to other people in Dearborn County who need to come here to be invited here, to be invited to the classes, to be invited to give a second look at Catholicism. What do us if we sit on our hands and don't do anything to help other people find the peace and calm and reverence that we all enjoy here at this and every Mass? Mm -hmm.